So I joined a space militia. <laughs> That's right. I joined the Skunk Works Fleet Command as a gunner aboard the Celestial Soul, a carrot commanded by Phoenix 83. It's been a lot of fun, and one of the things that we've been doing recently is running training sorties against NPC bounty hunter missions. The main one we're going up against have been hammerheads. Uh, NPC hammerheads are excellent for crew coordination training, and, and I wanted to share some of the things I've learned in my experience in case it helps other crews or other people looking to get into the game to understand what this multi-crew operations is about once you get to a ship that is, you know, takes six, seven people to operate. So hammerheads, especially NPC hammerheads specifically, are not a huge threat to a Carrick. You can always run away. Uh, but the good part about this for training is that an NPC hammerhead will let you know when you've done something wrong because it puts out enough damage that it's really going to teach you and punish you if you're not coordinating well with your crew or you approach it uh, in an uncareful manner. So I cannot wait for a, a Xeno threat or other kind of uh, bigger event now that I'm a member of this crew because I think coordinated like this, it's going to take uh, content that maybe, yeah, you could run single player and it's just going to make it more fun. Uh, and, and I'm really excited for that to happen. So I've learned a couple of things and I wanted to share them uh, here with you. The first tip is to set a time and location for your training. If you tell everybody what port you're meeting up at, that gives them a chance to log out at that port the night before or, or maybe in their play session the same day uh, and, and so that everybody's collected in one place so you can get going as fast as possible before you jump to menus and form a team party and, and do that group join. It is, uh, it's important to do this because you want to maximize flying together time and try and minimize the time you're doing, uh, you know, gathering everybody to the same station. Uh, another thing to do is to check, does anybody else in the crew have a backup ship? Uh, so if, uh, if everybody's, uh, you know, if you run into an asteroid or something and lose your first ship that you're training on, it would be good to know if somebody else has one as an option to, to use as a backup so you don't have to wait the claim time for a Carrick. Uh, and you know, if you just claim it as you're leaving that station and say, this will be our rally point if we get into trouble, um, then uh, you'll, you'll be able to have a second one ready to go, and that can be nice. The next tip is to think about boarding order. This is important because when you uh, retrieve your Carrick in a hangar, there's only so much time before it goes and gets itself impounded because you're blocking that hangar. So give priority to the bridge crew for getting on board and getting that thing off the ground. Uh, so that uh, maybe the gunners or the logistics crew coming on board, jamming up the elevators, jamming up the med bay, that type of stuff, uh, you know, might slow everything down. You don't want them waiting in line while the ship gets impounded, because then you're just going to have to do it all again. When it comes to the turrets, always good to do a weapons test, um, but sometimes we have found that here in patch 3.14 and 3.15, we're still encountering the issue where every once in a while there's a turret that is unable to target enemies or something's going wrong with it. So, you know, when in doubt, try turning it off and turning it back on again. And I mean that seriously, go and, uh, you know, use the interact inside of the turret to power it off using the kind of interact switch and then power it back on. And that usually solves the problem without having to power off the ship or get in and out or anything like that. We have found situations where sometimes a gunner is unable to get into the turret. Maybe it's not spawning. Uh, sometimes you can help that out by having another crew member come and sit in the, in the seat and, and get it to kind of sink itself back in and get it to load for that player. Uh, sometimes just playing with the distance between you and the turret seat uh, can, can, save, uh, can help that out. Another important part to drill in your training sessions are hangar operations. So the Carrick right now is probably the most functional combat carrier. It's a light carrier, extremely light carrier. It's really only built to hold a, a Pisces, you know, one of these runabouts inside of its hangar. Uh, but we've learned that you can fit Merlins and Archimedes up on top, on top of the gravity plate of the hangar door. You can fit two there pretty easily. Uh, and a couple things we've learned. The first one uh, is that it's dangerous. Uh, make sure that uh, nobody opens up the hangar door while you've got any Archimedes or Merlins per, you know, parked there on top of it because uh, they will glitch into the ship and explode and cause a lot of damage. So don't do that. Two, um, make sure that when you launch them, the Carrick is at speed zero. Uh, 
ships don't transfer any momentum to ships that they're launching um, right now. I think maybe that, that used to exist, but that doesn't exist right now in the game. So if you launch a ship and it's cruising, it's very likely it's going to slam into the upper turret. Don't do that. We've done it. It's, it's just something to get into the habit of, of when you launch into a con when you arrive at a combat zone, you know, go to zero speed, launch the fighters, uh, and then the carrot can take off and have some communication between uh, so that you can kind of do it without looking to know that the, the fighters are clear. And establish a launch order, you know, figure out whatever you need to keep things coordinated, including maybe a docking order of like how one ship goes and lands first and the other ship lands so that you're not bumping into each other when you're moving. Okay, now let's talk about actually engaging that hammerhead. The first thing you want to do is, you know, set and choose the location that you want to fight it. Some people like flying into the asteroids and just engaging it directly. The Carrick isn't all that maneuverable. It does not stop uh, very quickly. Uh, so you're at a disadvantage if you're trying to orbit a hammerhead in the middle of a bunch of asteroids. You probably want to pull it out and you also probably want to figure out how you're going to deal with any fighter escorts. So what we've done on the Celestial Soul is we've built a bit of a routine where we make sure we take out the escorts first, you know, either with our snub fighter craft or you know, by steaming directly for them and kind of finishing them off quickly, or pulling the enemy hammerhead out of the asteroid field after we've dealt with all of its escorts. Now, if you've got snub fighters, you have to make sure you're all pulling in the same direction because if the snub fighters are hanging around um, and the hammer, you know, your Carrick exits the asteroid field to try and pull the hammerhead out, that hammerhead's going to lose interest in the Carrick once it's about 4k away. So you have to try and all pull in the same direction in order to actually get it out. The, the hammerhead opens up fire, you know, at about 1.5k. That's about the same engagement distance as, as the Carrick. The challenge, though, is that it has a lot more guns than a Carrick does. So just trading blows with it at that distance is not really an option. If you can get it out of the field, though, you're going to have a pretty easy time orbiting it because it's just an NPC hammerhead, so it's not going to do much to counter uh, a subcapital ship orbiting it. So what you want to do is orbit around the hammerhead's axis at about 700 meters distance. This will cause enough lateral movement that the NPCs will have trouble targeting you as you're moving laterally against it at that speed. The NPC hammerhead is going to turn to face. It's probably going to turn to face the, uh, you, trying to put one of its uh, fully charged shields uh, in, in front of you. And, and that's fine. You might have to blow down a couple of its shield facings. Uh, but as long as you're moving and orbiting fast enough, the NPCs aren't, aren't particularly good at hitting moving targets. So it's a good training experience for uh, a, you know, a pilot to, to go orbit another capital ship. Uh, and it's good training experience for your gunners uh, who are probably now needing to you know, a move, hit a hammerhead that's not always inside a stable uh, you know, field of fire for it. Uh, your Carrick has four guns. It's very likely you're only ever going to get three on a target, um, which leaves the rear gunner often not having as much to do if you're not having to deal with uh, other fighter craft that are not the primary target of the Carrick at that moment. The last tip I wanted to make was one for optimizing for fun. Uh, so remember that you want to maximize the amount of time you're playing together uh, and try and minimize the amount of prep or setup or collecting people together that you do. You know, make sure everybody's respecting each other's time. This is a, we, some of us have lim very limited amounts of time to play this video game, so uh, you know, collecting all at the same time, you may have other things going on. And just understand that people will have to come, people will have to leave. Real life comes first. But if you do have you know, the ability to you know, get organized enough that you get to maximize your fun, always good. But be patient with one another. Another thing I'd like to say is that uh, remember that there's other people in the crew aside from you, who are probably being very patient and waiting while you're having your moment in the spotlight. So if you're a gunner and you're having a lot of fun gunning stuff, remember to be polite and just hang out and be patient when somebody else is getting the spotlight on them for some other kind of training. Um, you know, here at the Celestial Soul, we've done a lot of gunner practice lately, so I fully expect I'll be sitting in that gunner turret waiting while we do other kinds of missions soon, knowing that uh, we got a well-trained crew on Overwatch uh, ready to help everybody else have fun. 
so that's it. I hope that was informative. Uh, you know, subscribe if you want to follow along with more of the things I learn operating in this crew aboard the Celestial Soul and other things in Star Citizen, uh, and you know, general whatever uh, video game or other subject matter I happen to get obsessed with. It's been a heck of a lot of fun, and one of the best parts about this is you will meet other people as they cycle in and off your ship. Uh, as you get uh, guest visitors filling positions on the crew in an organization. Uh, and sometimes they'll pull you into other things that are going on in the Star Citizen uh, community, whether it's hanging out with uh, another ship or you know maybe doing one-on-one -on -one stuff or even just getting advice on the game. Uh, the other night, uh, some of uh, the members of the Celestial Soul, uh, we went out uh, with uh, a hammerhead. That's not part of Skunk Works. That's not part of uh, the fleet operations there. We try and stick to one crew, one ship. Uh, but this is with uh, Phoenix Enterprises uh, aboard uh, the Retribution, aboard uh, Hammerhead. We went and we hunted an Idris together. Uh, significantly more firepower in a player Hammerhead than an NPC Hammerhead or, or, or Carrick. Uh, so lots of fun there. It was my first time actually being aboard a Hammerhead while I was operating. Uh, and, and lots of fun. But, you know, the side benefits of playing with people is that, uh, you know, if you have fun with them, they might invite you to other things. So very cool. All right, take care, everybody, and see you next time.